Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Kay Hall from the UK Squirrel Accord. Uh, I'm starting off this exciting session um, uh, by talking about our Grey Squirrel Fertility Control Research. So the UK Squirrel Accord is a UK-wide partnership of 41 different conservation and forestry organisations, uh, companies, government agencies, partnerships with the links to Red Squirrel uh, conservation groups. And you can see a few of the names that we've been, uh, you've heard from today on, on this list. And our aims are to support the expansion and protection of red squirrels across the UK and to protect uh, trees and woods for future generations. And underlying all of these issues is, as you've already heard and already well know, the issues from grey squirrel impacts. Um, these are just a couple of videos that help highlight the issue. I often get asked, why can red squirrels and grey squirrels not coexist? Why can't we leave them to find a balance? Well, it is because um, grey squirrels will outcompete red squirrels for food and habitat and you can see from that video a big grey squirrel chasing off a red squirrel from a feeder. Um, the other issue that we have in England and Wales, not so much in Scotland because you have lower grey squirrel populations, but they bark strip uh, young broadleaf trees causing damage, stress and fatalities and actually um, people are reluctant to plant broadleaf trees despite all of the ecosystem service benefits because of this grey squirrel damage and it is a major issue in England and Wales and if you have higher grey squirrel populations in Scotland, you'd probably find it an issue there too. So there is a need to manage grey squirrels um, and and we did uh, a survey was done, a study was done in 2018 to look at public um, opinions towards different uh, management techniques. And the public have a strong preference for humane control methods with those not reliant on direct killing or not involving killing at the hands of people being regarded as, as the most acceptable. So of the options that were put to them, contraception, planting uh, to prevent grey squirrels getting in or biological control, control through pine martins were seen as far more acceptable than lethal methods such as shooting, using kill traps or using warfarin, which we, we know is, is banned now. Um, the thing with grey squirrel management is that we need to have um, different options because we need to be able to use grey squirrel management in different areas of the country and to be effective it needs to be used in, in, in lots of areas including those areas where lethal methods aren't necessarily acceptable and wouldn't necessarily be used. So we are funded by the UK Squirrel Accord and supporters and delivered by the Animal and Plant Health Agency. We are working towards de de developing an oral contraceptive and species specific feeding hopper for grey squirrels. We hope that, and we aim for this to be non-lethal, cost-effective, less labor intensive, more publicly acceptable. So to be able to use in those areas where lethal methods wouldn't necessarily be used. To be an alternative, for those areas or complementary to lethal methods, so using them in combination. It's a five year funded research project and at the end of this we'll register the final products for more widespread use. In terms of the oral contraceptive side, we need to develop a formula that can be taken orally, it can be ingested by grey squirrels, go through the digestive system and not be destroyed by the gut, uh, and enter the bloodstream to ensure fertility and reduce populations. During year three, we've been trialling three different contraceptive routes, two have been immunocontraceptive and one has been a cholesterol inhibitor. Now, the immunocontraceptives are based on um, formulas that are already working as injectable forms but need to be modified into an oral format but they do work very effectively in the injectable form for um, uh, contained populations they've been used for horses they've been used for goats but it would be almost impossible to um, capture three million odd grey squirrels and, and inject them all um, it's also illegal to re-release their grey squirrel into the wild so in terms of the neurocontraceptive route, what we're trying to do is inhibit the creation of the GnRH hormone. So GnRH is the precursor to the sex hormones, to testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. If you inhibit the creation of that initial precursor for, uh, hormone, you inhibit the creation of the sex hormones and you create, uh, you cause infertility. Diazacon works in a slightly different way by inhibiting cholesterol. Cholesterol is really fundamental in the formation of sex hormones. So if you inhibit the creation of cholesterol, you inhibit the sex hormones, and again, you're causing for infertility. 
We're now going into year four of the five-year project and we're further testing four, two of these formulas. One is the immunocontraceptive and the other is the diazepam, is the cholesterol inhibitor. And the best one of these will be taken forward into the final stages into year five and into, uh, into manufacture. In terms of the feeding hoppers, what we want to do is create something that allows gray squirrels to access the bait that will ultimately co contain the contraceptive, but prevents non-target species from accessing that bait. We don't want to impact other species. So the immunocontraceptive could impact, it's a mammal specific, not species specific, and diazocon could impact other mammal species and birds. We also want to assess how many squirrels are interested in taking up the bait that will contain the contraceptive and accessing the feeding hopper. And actually our research has found so far that if you put a hopper into, if you put hoppers into a wood, then the majority of squirrels will access those feeding hoppers, gray squirrels, and consume the bait in only four days, which is fantastic. So if we can get the individual bait uptake and concentration right, we could, in, we could uh, make infertile um, all the, or the majority of gray squirrels in a wood in just four days, which would reduce the amount of, 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 of you know, labor time that needs to go out and, and uh, do gray squirrel management. We're testing the species specificity of using weighted doors. So this is the most cost-effective way of trying to keep only, allow only gray squirrels into a feeding hopper and keep red squirrels out. At the moment, gray squirrels are able to access the hopper. Unfortunately, some of the larger red squirrels are able to access it and a few stoats. So what we're doing now is to look at further refining those weighted doors, perhaps only using those in gray squirrel only areas, and maybe looking at alternatives in red squirrel areas, so, such as using color sensors instead to, it, we're comparing red color, co colors with gray co colors. And if there's a particular light spectrum that we can use to specifically just open the door using a color sensor that only opens it for gray squirrels, then we'll look at those. And that may be what we use in red squirrel areas. We also looked at, um, we also put uh, the feeding hoppers into woods with pine martins, and this is a video showing you a pine martin interested in the feeding hopper, but definitely not able to gain access to the feeding hopper. And again, this is one of the non-target species that we definitely want to prevent from accessing uh, an oral contraceptive. This year we looked at working with volunteers in Northumberland and these are the wonderful, some of the wonderful volunteers we worked with and looking at whether um, non-APHA staff who have been the only people deploying the feeder so far could de deploy the feeder effectively in, in woods. And of course, volunteers are absolutely wonderful and more than capable of doing this, but it's a, it had to be part of our research. And we're looking at a camera index methodology. So using um, wildlife cameras to estimate squirrel density in a woodland. Um, and that can be used for gray squirrels, but it could also be used for red squirrels. Modeling work has been done that's being researched by DEFRA, uh, sorry, funded by DEFRA, use, looking at the efficacy of fertility control and testing different management strategies. So based, modeling based on the initial field study said that around 60% of squirrels, if they become infertile, achieves eradication in a good time compared to culling. The graph on the right also shows um, a comparison of population reduction. So it assumes for each of these that 79% of squirrels have consumed the bait in a wood and become infertile at three hoppers per hectare over four days. If the contraceptive is 50% effective, so 50% of the squirrels are made infertile, then you see the purple line shows a quite a steady drop off in population, but never quite gets down to zero. But if we can get the contraceptive to be 75%, 90%, 100% effective, then the drop-off is much faster and you can get down to eradicating a population. They also looked at combining fertility control with culling. So a year of intense, uh, rapid population reduction through culling and then using fertility control to follow up to eradicate those final few squirrels. And I believe as Emma Sheehy pointed out, the last gray squirrels can be the hardest and most costly to remove, to remove from a woodland. So if you use fertility control instead of having to go out and cull, then that might be a more cost effective option. Please don't ask me too many questions about the modeling work because I'm not a modeler and I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, sharing someone else's work, but I can pass questions on if you really want to know more. 
Um, in terms of the fundraising, we have two years of the Reset project left to run and fund, and the fundraising at the moment that we've really done is solely focused on the research, but we are looking to fundraise more for some of the other activities that we do and the core funding for the, for the Accord. We've raised over £900,000, which is absolutely fantastic, and we aim to raise another £150,000 just to, to get us over the final finishing line for the research project. And I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's funded and supported this project, UK Squirrel Accord signatories, grant trusts and foundations, private individuals and estates, whether it's been through donations of money or time, whether it's been involved in the research trials, or whether it's been helping to communicate the, the fertility control research out to your networks and, and wider then, then that's all absolutely fantastic, so thank you. And we'll also look at funding the landscape scale registration trials we need for the final products. So we will need a registration phase following the end of the, the, the research project, which ends in January 2024. But what we're hoping to do is start collecting that data now, so we reduce that time. So what are our next steps? Well, we are starting year four of the five year project, which ends in January, 2024. And we will look towards the registration phase needed for the final products. We're taking two contraceptives forward for further testing, an immunocontraceptive and diazocon. And the best one of these will be taken forward to the final stages. We're looking at refining the species specificity of the feeding hoppers, whether that's through a weighted door mechanism or through colour coat scan scanning or through other methods that we're researching at the moment. And it may be, like I said, that we use different methods or, or different techniques in, in different areas. So if, if the weighted door keeps out everything but red squirrels, then we can use it in the gray squirrel area. If we can use the color coat scanner, which might probably be slightly more expensive in the red squirrel area, then great. But we, what we want to do is get the majority of gray squirrels uh, accessing the bait. So if we make the weighted door too heavy, we'll allow the younger, smaller gray squirrels in, so it will be less effective. Um, we're looking at the landscape scale field trial development, so we're looking at working with RSNE and their potential new projects, and also looking at working with the National Forest on field trials that we'll need to collect the data, the registration process. We hope to start that data collection for the registration dossier sooner rather than later. So one of the things we're, we're looking into is what route we'll have to go down, whether it be the veterinary route or the biocide route, and what data we need to collect and how we need to collect that data for the registration dossier. And we want to start collecting that in year four and year five. So we think the registration phase will probably take three to five years. So if we can start it now, that shaves years off the end of the research phase of the project. We also want to start discussions with manufacturers. So once we've honed down a little bit more with the one contraceptive we want to use and with the feeding hopper, we want to start those conversations with manufacturers to ensure that somebody else on board to take this to manufacture and, and that it's, it gets on the market and it becomes available for widespread use in, in, in the near future. You know, when the registration phase, uh, when the registration phase is ended, you know, that, that those products are, are being manufactured. We're fundraising for the final 150,000 we need for the end of the research. We'll have an online update in April 2022 with the wonderful APHA team. Um, and with our update from March earlier this year is available to watch on our UK Squirrel Accord YouTube channel if you're interested. We'll also be organising a conference that we hope to hold, all being well, in autumn 2022. Um, and again, the APHA team will be there uh, to present some of their work and also to, to talk to you and answer your questions. They're also travelling to Colorado, uh, hopefully in May next year, to take part in the ninth International Wildlife Fertility Control Conference, where it will set our grey squirrel research on, a, on an international scale. Um, and this will be very interesting because some of these, the immunocontraceptive and diazocon, could be used for other species if you slightly modified them and if you changed the specific uh, feeding hopper or delivery device. So it could be that they could be used for other problem species like rats on islands or, or feral pigs or feral goats. So it's all very exciting and it's all very positive progress. 
Um, and I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to find out more, please email info at squirrelaccord.uk or uh, go to our website, www.squirrelaccord.uk. Uh, if you put forward slash events, that's where all of our events are put. But if you look on the uh, resources library section of the fertility control research section, that we have an FAQs document, which gives you much more information that I wasn't able to give you today. I um, uh, just want to say a big thank you to Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels and all the rest of the speakers for these this uh, the rest you know the beginning of this day and for tomorrow so thank you